that's not current and kind of generate a little bit more of that excitement on the community level. So we're doing things on the soft side of the house as well as on the technical applications. Okay, so to keep, uh, keep moving on, the, uh, the third area that we talked about at Open Force uh, 07 was uh, the administration side and things that we could do in the admin UI. Um, not just from a from a usability perspective, but maybe from a permissions perspective as well. Uh, so, so changes that we can do to to better facilitate your ability to manage uh, your dynamic installation. So, to talk a little bit about that and, and some of the stuff that we've done in the past this kind of stuff. Okay, here, here we go again. It's a standard joke actually among the team anymore. It's like when we first started doing. Uh, .NET Nuke, we all kind of came in doing the same stuff, and I was uh, ripping code with everybody else. But uh, somewhere along the line, I don't know how it happened, but I got the responsibility for doing admin. And uh, so <clears throat> the ongoing, you know, joke around here is how many uh, how many days it's been since I actually fired up a uh, you know an IDE, and uh, we're in triple digits. <laughs> um, but I do do a lot of the admin, and historically. Uh, I think a lot of people have gotten used to, so we don't get as much negative feedback about it, but we're aware of the change, that um, there are two hard-coded user levels, the host and the admin. And you get the menus, and they have what they have on them. And some of those tools work, and some of them work better than others. <laughs> some of them, um, you know, the menu options don't get visited that often. Um, so. I think you'll probably be happy to know that in 5.0, that's different. Uh, and this is actually a very major shift. So technically, what you're going to see is that the administrative modules are now unbundled. When it fires up, it's going to look the same, but you're going to have the flexibility to manage administrative modules in the same way that you would manage any other module. So hallelujah, the days of being able to figure out how to do it. want to come up to the role of admin, you're going to be able to do. Uh, more exciting to some of you, uh, maybe you have businesses around .NET here, is that we're now also opening up a whole other avenue for commercial products. Um, so guess what? Now you can write some of your own modules to do some nice WizMan administrative features that people are going to want to go ahead and install and make part of their administrative toolkit. So, there's probably a battle that I have to have, and that's not forgetting something specific. But as uh, I think you can see, there's going to be an awful lot of opportunity there. Uh, not only in customization for your clients or for your own internal use, but also in opportunities for those of you that are making money in this market. There's one other pretty uh, interesting aspect of this as well. And so it started off that we wanted to treat admin modules just like any other module, and admin pages like any other page uh, within the portal. So, I mean, you can. After this, if the portal is initially installed, you can go in and you can actually remove uh, pages from the admin menu that you don't want. Um, a lot of people don't use features such as the vendors area uh, and actually don't want their users to play around with it either because it's just a support nightmare for them if they get in there and make a mess. So you can actually remove that now, which you couldn't do in the past. Um, but going down that path, we realized that, uh, that host users needed more administrative control over the modules which were available in individual portals. We had this feature before called premium modules, which sort of worked. It was kind of a clunky way of doing the permissions. Um, and now we actually have a, a more robust system that it more aligns with the rest of the permissions model in DNN, where the host user can, can granularly assign modules to individual portals to say that you know this portal is allowed to use this particular module. And then the module administrator, the portal administrator, can then say these users and these roles are allowed to use this module. So it really changes the, the concept of the control panel so that you have a lot more control over which users are allowed to use which modules. Nice. <laughs> In the interest of moving things along, um, since uh, I'm sure a lot of you want to get to the giveaways here in a little bit, uh, we're, one of the topics that we talked about at Open Force 07 was uh, skinning enhancements. And I think, uh, how many people were here at uh, Nick's talk uh, last session? Everybody? Some, anybody missed that talk? Okay, so we pretty much got everybody, so we're not really going to go into, into depth in the skinning stuff, because I think you all have a really good feel for what's coming. Um, and, and we'll talk more in depth about that uh, in, in 
future sessions that we have. Um, so the, the final area that we talked about at Open 407 in our roadmap um, was on workflow and versioning and, and how we deal with that within DNN. You know, it's been a big, a big pain point for a very long time. It's the number one voted item uh, within our roadmap module. Um, and so to talk a little bit about the vision that we shared at Open 407, I'm going to hand this back to Sean and let him talk a little bit about workflow. So, I mean, we covered this a little bit at uh, the conference in the fall. Um, we're versioning and workflow, um, people tend to bundle those two items together. They're not really the same thing. Um, and when we're talking about it, we're talking about the context of a content management system, because that's the, uh, the capabilities that most people are using within the dynamic application when they're talking about these features. So, in terms of versioning, the concept there is obviously you want to store multiple versions of a particular piece of content which allows you a lot of extra features like the ability to, uh, to stage content so that it's not available to the general public immediately, like it happens today in our direct publish model. So you could have a staging area, you could create content, you know, modify it, and only once somebody's had some, reviewed the content, then it could be published. So that requires at least two levels of versioning and perhaps n levels of versioning. Um, and with versioning also comes the capability of being able to roll back to a previous version of content. So these are the types of features which enterprise customers really can't live without. Uh, and it's actually surprising how many enterprise customers deal with DNN today without any type of versioning. Um, clearly there's other features in the product which they love so they can't do without. So, um, But uh, the concept of workflow. Workflow is being able to define a series of states in which content uh, can follow through. Um, basically, content can be created, then it can be reviewed, then it can be published, so that would be like a three-stage workflow. Um, today, like I said, we only have a, a single-stage workflow. Basically, it, it goes live immediately as soon as you, you enter content. And so, in the, um, in the realm of content management, that's how you would refer to workflow, but, but ASP.NET, I mean, has come out in ASP.NET 3.0. Uh, Windows Workflow Foundation came out. And that's more of a generic workflow solution, which can be used for workflow in almost any type of, of application. Uh, that wouldn't necessarily be applied to content. It, it might be applied to creation of users or creation of roles, creation of basically any entity in the application. And so it, when people say we need workflow, it, it's something you know, without a lot of detail, it's really difficult to figure out what the people actually want. Um, and digging into some of those requirements has been somewhat difficult. Some people really, when they talk about um, workflow and versioning, all they really want is sort of an advanced version of the HTML text module which we have today, which would allow them to store multiple versions with you know, basically a, a staging area. That would be somewhat of a more trivial solution to come up with, and there's already a few third-party solutions out there which do that. Um, other people want you know, the full kind of enterprise implementation of workflow and versioning, which would accommodate basically any module on any page, on any portal, and, and that would be obviously a lot more complicated. So I mean, at this point, we have a number of different prototypes, similar to what we have with um, our content localization. And in fact, the two features are kind of intricately linked together um, in that content localization has many of the same characteristics as workflow and versioning. And they probably share a lot of the same administrative UI, uh, usability techniques, uh, they can share a lot of the same back-end APIs, so at this point, I mean, we're still in the prototype stage and that is not going to be delivered in the initial 5.0 release. So at this point, uh, let's go ahead and, and talk about, are there any questions at this point about, uh, about workflow? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're going to do that in just a second. So, yes, yes, yes. Um, at this point in time, what do you suggest in terms of third-party tools that might alleviate the issue of working with I Right, I won't. There are a couple of them that are out there. Engage Publish is certainly a, a one option. Uh, the uh, Enterprise Forms uh, from, I think it's a Thong, Thong Mai, or however you pronounce that. Uh, again, Cyrillic language. Uh, I'm not the guy. So, um, anyway, so uh, 